The trial of William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang before the International Criminal Court continued from 28th to 31st January 2014 with the testimony of the 10th prosecution witness who testified under the pseudonym P0128. The witness testified under the protective measures of a pseudonym, facial pixelation, and voice distortion. Parts of the testimony were given in private sessions, closed to the public to preserve the confidentiality of the witness's identity. In open session, the witness testified about events that occurred in Nandi Hills in the Rift Valley province during the period of the 2007 elections. He said that before the start of the post-election violence, the atmosphere seemed normal in the area. Asked by prosecution trial lawyer Regina Weiss about the election campaign period, the witness said he attended two rallies of the ODM, Orange Democratic Movement, including a rally in Kobujoy, during which William Ruto addressed the crowd of supporters. Your Honor, I told you that Mr. Ruto asked the Kalenjin to vote in massive numbers and that once the ODM took power, they were going to uproot the tree stumps and their lands would be given back to their owners. And what were they talking about, witness? Your Honour, what happened was the violence and some people were forced to leave where they were living and go somewhere else. And then afterwards, I thought, ah, oh, they were the tree stumps they were talking about at the time of the election campaign. Can you specify the ethnicity of those people? Your Honour, we knew that the Luyu came and bought land in the Rift Valley area. They hadn't had any land ownership rights yet. Uh, and the Kikuyu people knew that, we knew that there were people who were coming to do business in the Rift Valley. They were the people who were targeted. We were targeted that way. During another ODM rally in Koyo, similar statements referring to lawyers had been made on behalf of Mr. Ruto, the witness added. Shortly after the election results were announced, the witness said he went to a gathering organized at the office of the district commissioner in Nandi Hills in order to find out more about rumors of violence starting in Eldoret. On his way there, after seeing a police officer being shot with an arrow and killed, and also witnessing a group of Kalenjins looting the properties of Kikuyus, the witness decided to run back home and flee with his family. He further testified that his property had been completely looted and he never returned there. Following the prosecution's examination, the witness was also briefly examined by the common legal representative of victims, in this case, Mr. Wilfred Nderito. Common legal representative of victims asked the witness about his state of mind during the time of the events. The witness expressed sadness and worry about his safety and that of his children during that difficult time in his life. Now, Mr. Witness, have you to date been able to return to location one? No, Your Honor. Mr. Witness, why have you not been able to return there? Your Honor, according to what I saw and the events that occurred, I was worried for my safety from that day on. Your Honor, I was worried for the lives of my children that remained behind. And I said to myself, let me just go even if things are bad. If I'm killed, I will be killed with my children. But if I'm not killed, then I would succeed in bringing them to this other side. That's what I had in my heart. Even my family and parents told me not to go, but I said I will go. 
If my children will die, I will die with them. If I succeed, I will go and come back with them. Those were my thoughts. And the children, did they continue after the, the violence to attend the same schools that they were attending? No, Your Honor. My children have faced so much difficulties in their education up to now. When they go to a new school, they have to start everything afresh, sometimes in the middle of the year. It is difficult to maintain a family when you have nothing. I cannot live the way I used to in the past. I have gone back to totally zero, zero. My children have faced so many difficulties, and so have I. During public parts of the cross-examination by William Ruto's defense counsel, David Hooper QC, the witness stood by his testimony about the rallies he said he attended and his personal experience during the post-election violence. Mr. Hooper, Father cross-examined the witness about his testimony concerning the police officer being killed by an arrow. The defense counsel presented a photo of a man he identified as being Mr. George Odiambo and head of the Nandi Hills Police Station during the time of the events, and who is still alive. The witness responded that he didn't know the person on the photo and added that he had himself seen from afar someone falling down and heard people shouting that the head of police was killed. The, the OCS at Nandy Hills at the time wasn't Kikuyu, was he? He was this man, a Luo. Is that right? After the killing of the OCS, they said he was a Kikuyu OCS. I have no idea if he was Luo or if he was the OCS. After the killing, people said the OCS that was killed was Kikuyu, Your Honor. And can I ask you to look at a, another photograph? This is tab three, and it's KEN D09 0029-0015. Looking at that photograph, you see, I. It's, it's my case that that is the same man. That photograph was taken last week. Do you see? So he's alive. What I'm saying is the man who was the OCS, and was a Luo, in fact, at Nandy Hill Station, is alive. What, what do you say to that, that the OCS is alive today and no OCS was injured or murdered at all in Nandy Hills? What do you say to that? Your Honor, all those people you have shown me, I don't know them. Then again, I have said that after we arrived in Nandi Hills, there was a crowd in front, and suddenly it was said that someone was shot with an arrow, and that it was the head of the police, Your Honor. I couldn't stand there to investigate, if it was him or someone else. I just turned back immediately, Your Honor. Proceedings in the case of William Ruto and Joshua Sang will resume on Monday 17th February with the testimony of the 11th prosecution witness. <laughs>
maintaining communications and ensuring a safe environment for all. Thank you.